Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and in this video I'll show you everything you need to know about booleans for hard surface. Let's go. This video is going to be for beginners guys, so I'm going to go a bit slower than usual. And it's going to be vanilla based because it's important to, you know, grasp the, uh, the foundations, okay? So we're going to talk about the most important things in Blender in terms of uh, booleans for hard surface. So first thing what you want to do is go to preferences, all right? And you want to enable an add-on called bool tools, okay? So type here bool and enable this add-on. This will allow you to use shortcuts with numpad. If you don't have numpad on your keyboard, go to input and enable emulate numpad, all right? Save preferences and you're good to go. Cool, so now let's the cube and let's just talk about booleans. Now the basic boolean operations is simply shift D to duplicate the cube. So you got this cutter selected, shift select whatever you want to cut, control minus on the keyboard, you're done. So now here, when I'm going to select that cube and go to this wrench, you will see we're going to have a Boolean modifier set to difference. Just a quick interjection here. We have a fantastic free course for anyone who would like to progress in the knowledge of Blender. It's called Hard Surface Jumpstart. It's free. It's on our website, link in the description, and it will teach you so much about hard surface, give you such a nice boost to your studies that you will not believe it's free. Go ahead and grab it and enjoy. Okay, now there are three different settings here. You can actually on the fly change how the Boolean behave. So you can have a difference, you can have a union, so you know, both of them combined, intersection between them, okay? So different types of booleans, all right? So that's rule number one. Then you have different commands for this control menu. So if I'm going to shift D that again, and shift click the shape on a boolean and press control forward slash on numpad, I'm gonna create a slash boolean. This is gonna create two shapes. One of them is gonna have intersection boolean running on that mesh because it's an intersection between these two shapes. And the other one is gonna have a difference boolean going on because you know, there is a difference cut here, right? So you got difference boolean and intersection boolean and together they form a slash boolean, okay? So you slash a piece of geo out of the main shape. Third one is gonna be union boolean. So shift D, Y, move it in here, shift click, control plus, and you got the union boolean, okay? So that's the basics. Now, let's talk about uh, some more advanced stuff that you're gonna be needing for um, creating proper shading or on, you know, on your surfaces. So shift A at a cube. And when you're creating booleans in Blender, Blender, unlike hard ups or box cutter, will not automatically add, you know, shading, uh, smooth shading and auto smooth to your shapes. Let me show you what I do. So if I'm going to go to edit mode, and by the way, I'm using machine tools for going to edit mode. So I'm doing it very quickly by pressing tab and using my Pi menu. But uh, if you don't use any add-ons for which you should be shot, press tab and one, two, three to access, you know, vert, edge and face. But uh, machine tools is a free add-on and I got uh, two videos, one hour each on machine tools and they're on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and watch them. If you want to speed up your workflow in Blender and be more efficient, I highly recommend you get this add-on. Okay, so let's just go to edge mode, select this edge, control B to bevel this, scroll the mouse, and now you can see that we're gonna have this faceting, okay? The reason why we have this faceting is because we have this mesh set to shade flat. Now what we wanna do is we wanna shade it smooth. So go here to the right click menu. So right click, shade smooth. And then we need to add auto smooth. Because at the moment what Blender is doing is actually averaging everything. It's shading everything smooth. But we need to define which edges are sharp, which edges are smooth. So go here and go to normals. And now by clicking this button here, we're gonna tell Blender that every single edge above 30 degrees, it's gonna be sharp. So if you're gonna have something uh, below 30 degrees, you know, something like this, for example, okay, GG and move it in here. This is not gonna get shaded sharp because it's below 30 degrees. You understand how it works? Cool. So now the problem with booleans is that you need to shade smooth every single shape you cut and every single boolean you use. Otherwise, you're gonna have flat shading on your cut. So let me show you. Let me add another cube here and S, Y to scale it. I'm gonna move it here and scale it on Z and actually move it somewhere here. And I'm gonna go to local mode and I'm going to, you know, bevel this 
and you see that this is flat shaded just go back shift select that Control minus and you will see that my flat shading is gonna get projected onto my mesh so this cutter also has to be smooth okay it cannot be flat it needs to be smooth all right so there you go that's what uh, that's what you need to do second thing you need to remember about weighted normal modifier now shading smooth and auto smooth is not enough you need to have a weighted normal modifier whenever you run boolean and bevel so let's grab a cube here and you know move it somewhere here okay like that and we're going to shade it smooth and auto smooth and select that control minus okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to press uh select that and press h to hide it click on this mesh and now what I want to do is I want to add a bevel. Okay, so go here to modifier and I'm going to, I'm not sure I got two booleans here. Let me see now. I can remove that one. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a bevel. Now with vanilla blender bevels, you know, unfortunately you need to perform a few actions. Unlike with, you know, hard house, which is a one click uh, operation. You need to perform a few things. One of them is going to be uh, creating three segments and we're going to change the size of bevel because insanity and also we want to change this uh, curvature here by going to geometry and changing from sharp to arc which should help a lot with shading okay so here what we're going to do now is we're going to add weighted normal modifier to fix this nasty shading now weighted normal what's going to do is going to actually flex all the normals of the faces normals are kind of like uh, lines that are um, pointing at 90 degrees away from each face on uh, in your on your geometry. Each of these faces has normals, and they kind of look like lines. I can show you actually here by enable these. These are normals, okay? And the, by the way they point and the angle they form uh, will determine shading of the face, okay? So what we need to do here, we need to make sure that these faces are flexed, okay? So the normals are flexed. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna simply add weighted normal modifier, right? And this is gonna fix the problem. And this modifier, uh, two rules, okay? Never apply it. I mean it. Never apply it. And two, always keep it at the bottom, right? Now the problem with Blender is that whenever you create a new cut, okay? So I'm gonna grab a new cube and put it somewhere here, and I'm gonna shade it smooth and you know do the same thing. In hard ups and box cutter, this is one click, it's automatic, and this is why we use these add-ons. And I'm gonna perform another boolean here. You will see that uh, we're gonna get this problem. Now, this problem is caused by the fact that our modifier stack is messed up. You cannot have booleans above uh, below weight normals, you need to move it up here, drag it, yeah. But you can also uh, see that the bevel doesn't go through it because the bevel is above the cut, so you got beveled mesh first and then it gets cut, which means the cutter. Uh, the, the cutout mesh doesn't get beveled, so you need to move it above the bevel. See, now it works. Again, that's automatic with hard ups and box cutter, okay? So that's rule number two, okay? Let me just duplicate this cube and show you something else. This is quite interesting. Whenever you have mesh that occupies the same uh, the same space in 3D as the mesh you're trying to cut, like here, you see this area here? That shading is caused uh, by the fact that these two faces are literally on the same space. So Blender doesn't know. So Blender doesn't know which one is on top. That's called Z fighting. So if I'm gonna select this and this and control minus, now usually your boolean is set to fast. Okay, not exact, but to fast. That's by default. So by default you will see no boolean happening, and I'll be like, what the hell is going on? So when you select this boolean here and slightly shift the scale, so slightly scale it or slightly move it, right? It's gonna start working. But you can also change the uh, solver here to exact and it's gonna work as well, so that's not a tip, okay? And the last very common problem that you're gonna probably run into is scale, okay? It's not a thing that you need to take care of manually in Blender if you're not using hard ups and box cutters. So let me show you. If I'm gonna have this cube here and I want to um, grab a cutter here so shift the x and i'm going to scale it on y axis like this all right and i'm going to move it here so you can actually see the problem and i will try to now go to edit mode select these two edges and, and try to create uh, a bevel you will see that my bevel will not work it's just going to be have this weird kind of an angle the reason for that is because uh, of scale issue if i go to end menu here so press end to open this up go to item and in object mode if i'm going to show you here the scale 
Usually the scale should be uniform, so one by one by one. That's a you know default scale, okay? This one has been scaled on y axis, right? So these axis, the yellow one, and this is why it's distorted. So what I need to do before I'm gonna use a bevel, I need to apply scale. So control A and apply scale, and this you see will reset my my skill here and now I can actually you know bevel this and use it as a boolean so right click shade smooth you know here auto smooth click that control minus okay and again this one the same right click shade smooth auto smooth I mean it's just you know it gets boring guys after some time okay so this would be everything you need to know about the basics of boolean for hard surface but now very quickly let me show you how easy that is with add-ons okay and this is why you should be using them first of all you can notice that um, uh, if i'm going to open this auto smooth here and i'm gonna uh, let me just enable my box cutter and hard ups very quickly so go to add-ons and i'm going to enable my hard ups and then my box cutter save preferences i'm gonna press alt w to enable box cutter and now look what happens to my auto smooth okay what I'm going to start dragging and drawing the, the cutter. Boom, applied. So my cube now has applied auto smooth. I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to press B to bevel it and I'm done. That's how quick you work with hard ups and box cutter, okay? My weighted normals is a joke. Watch this bevel, Q, bevel, okay? Press 1, right? I'll click on sharpen, I'm done. And in addition to that, all the modifiers are being sorted automatically. If I'm going to add another cutter here, watch what it's going to be added. It's going to be added above the bevel. Boom. See what I mean? It was added in here. So this is an extremely fast way of working. And there are many other tools that are completely unavailable in Blender. For example, if I draw a circle here and I cut this like that, press B for bevel, and then Shift F, I can actually create a chamfer cut here uh, in the middle of my mesh. Now, in addition to that, you got other tools, like for example, I could grab the dots here and create cut perfectly in the middle of the mesh so that I have to actually look for it. Shift T to taper it, and I can create something like this. The um, power of box cutter and hard ups is incredible, and the speed of working is just unbelievable. So, if you are serious about hard surface, I highly recommend you get both add ons as soon as possible. I started working in Blender with five add ons. Hard ops, box cutter, mesh machine, machine tools, and kit ops day one. I didn't know how to use a cube, how to move a cube, how to do anything. I uploaded all the add ons and started learning from Master Z on videos. So be smart, do not work stupid. You know, you, ne you need to save time because time is money. Links to all the add ons I'm using, especially the box cutter and hard ops, are in the video description. So go ahead and grab them. So I think that's all you need to know about basics of bullions for hard surface modeling. Like I said, if you want to push your knowledge much farther, go ahead and grab our free course on hard surface modeling in Blender. It's fantastic. And if you're a bit more advanced and you're already into hard surface uh, workflow with hard ups and box cutter, we have another free course called Sci-Fi Terminal Design in Blender, which is uh, really cool and suited for beginners. So you can go ahead and watch that as well. After these two courses, you should be quite efficient and you should have quite a good grasp on hard surface in Blender. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.